Um, I can't really start this video about the indoor grow space that I'm developing without first saying thank you to my friend Brad at Hidden Harvest Grow Lights, um, Hidden Harvest Grow Company. He has been an amazing support and an amazing friend, and he really does produce an amazing product. So uh, before I even get started talking about what my plans are here, um, I just need to say thank you um, from the bottom of my heart. Um, my son is really enjoying this, and uh, I, I really do appreciate everything, Brad, that you have done for me and for, for your friends. I know that you have many out there. Thank you so much. Okay, that said, let me show you what kind of support you get from Brad. I ordered five lights from him, and when I unboxed them, this is what I read, one at a time. And he made sure he packaged them so that I had to read them one at a time. So he's responsible for all of this. <laughs> cannot praise this man enough. He has just been amazing, amazing, amazing friend. And thank you. So that being shown, let me show you the space, which is an absolute mess. This is just a garden shed at this point. Um, and it is going to be transitioning into the indoor grow room. Um, it has a loft up here. Um, which is fencing and chicken supplies and everything else. So my plan is, as you can see this, I have this metal shelving unit, very similar to the setup um, that you see in sh the shelves that you would see uh, at, in Brad's setup. And I am, uh, I'm going to be expanding these shelves out to the edge of the loft. And I have 24 feet of space on this wall and then, um, because of the front porch area, which I love, by the way, um, I only have, what I think it's four foot, so I think I have maybe eight feet of space on, on this far wall. Uh, I think that this is enough um, to get more shelving units up. And one of the problems that I have are that I don't currently have electricity in my garden shed. But uh, we do have a hookup panel and we will be running power straight out here. Now, uh, we've been gaining experience on running electricity uh, by wiring my mini man's man cave, which is what that is out there. Um, one of many projects, folks. One of many projects. A little neurotic, so I gotta do it all at once. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Alex's man cave is the first priority here. Um, he needs a place um, where he can be supervised, but still be his own space. Um, so we bought him this, and we did run power to it. Um, dirt is still fresh. Uh, still need to cover up the main line here. Um, this is not the cheapest thing in the world to do, but it's not the most expensive thing either, and well worth the effort. Um, in addition, I will be learning. <laughs> I will be learning solar panels. Um, I do have solar panel kits, and we do want to, to have solar panels available for backup power in the event of a disaster. I can still keep running those grow lights. Um, I also have plans for things like a gasifier, um, which would use wood gases to run a power source. Um, I have some reel-to-reels saved up, pulled out of the garbage, so that we may be developing some wind power technology. And uh, there will be projects. I, we are approaching our food, uh, food, uh, what, what's the word for it? Sustainability. Um, food sustainability as though we are headed for extremely bad weather. I believe it's getting colder, but nothing I do here will be pointless 
if for some reason we don't get colder. It's never a waste of time to secure your family's food. And that's what this channel is primarily going to be about. And I hope that I can, uh, I, I can learn from you and walk you through my mistakes as I tinker uh, with attempting to adapt this space for, um, for unusual weather patterns, we will say that. Um, and thank you so much for joining me. And next, I'm going to take you over to the coops and uh, the eventual permaculture food forest. Another project. Thank you guys.